Hi, this is Davide Straccione from the Black and Gothic Doom Metal Band Shores of Null, and you are listening to The Bloodshed with Vampire on Metal Messiah Radio International. I'd like to congratulate Metal Messiah Radio with its 13th anniversary. Davide, it's a great pleasure to have you here. This is The Vampire. I want to welcome you to The Metal Bloodshed on Metal Messiah Radio International. Pleasure is mine. Thank you for uh, inviting me. Davide, one of the founding members and vocalists of Shores of Null, but also the frontman of the Italian Piscara Slotch progressive band Zippo. As always, Davide, fans like to get to know about their idols uh, much better. So tell us, what have you conducted you into metal? I grew up in a very small town in Italy. I got into metal pretty early, but not as early as my city friends i was about like 14 years old started listening to everything that was heavy for me at that time iron maiden pantera Marilyn manson sex pistols a bunch of other bands so everything with distortion and aggression in it would make me happy so yeah i discovered new music through tape trading at the beginning with my schoolmates and then i started buying my first cds uh, when i was 16 17 years old and started my first band when I was 18, Zippo, the stone rock sludge doom band right. from Pescara, the city I come from. Actually grew up in a small town near Pescara. Currently I live in Pescara, it's on the east coast central part of Italy. David, uh, talking about uh, the band that you formed at the time, Zippo, are you guys planning to come up with a new album? I mean, since the band's last album, After Us, was released back in 2016. Yeah, exactly. Actually, we kind of on a hiatus right now. We never talked about that. We never made posts about that. So the band is still active, but we were not performing, we're not rehearsing. And the latest album we released was, as you said, in 2016. And then through Microt Records, we reissued our debut album, Ode to Maximum, in 2018. It was one of the first releases of my new label. But yeah, we played the last shows in 2019 and then we didn't disband it the situation right now and jobs and other bands it's been really difficult to rehearse again so um, i hope we can go back together and compose new music as soon as possible but right now shores of no is my priority and other members in zippo also have other priorities at the moment so i can't really tell what future will hold okay talking about shores of null is a rome based metal band an unwavering present with Within the metal underground scenes, their musical outset in 2013 and up to now with the same founding members. David, could you please present us the band current lineup and how did you guys met and have decided to form this band, Shores of Now? The idea behind a band like this dates back to maybe 2012. 2011, something like that. Because me and Gabriele, one of the guitarists, are longtime friends, and we used to tour together with our former bands, Zippo, and his older band, now disbanded, was called The Orange Man Theory, playing some hardcore mixed with death metal. We were on the same label at that time, so we used to tour together. We played European tours, and we became close. Although our former bands were totally different from what we played with Shores of No, we found a common ground in gothic metal, doom metal, and melancholic music in general. All these aspects were not close enough to our mother bands, so we started talking about a project to start together. But then that was it. We just talked about that. A few years later, around 2013, he sent me some demos, actually. Listen to these songs, to these demos, see if you like them, if you want to sing on it. So these songs were composed by him and Raffaele, the other guitarist, a founding member and actual member of the band. I really like those demos. So I started working on it, the melodies and, the, and everything else, lyrics. So in 2014, we released our first album. George of Noll have turned out to impressive records, the melodic and the somber quiescence 
via Candlelight Records 2014 and the darker and more complex Black Drapes for Tomorrow via Candlelight Record as well in 2017, both of which were highly praised by the worldwide music press. Both albums, great albums, I must say, David, but what have the band, I mean, improved on the second album compared to the first one? The first album was really a new thing in the scene and for all of us because for me it was a, a genre that I've always wanted to play but the band after me Gabriele and, and Raffaele came together we hired two other musicians we asked to join the band Matteo on bass and Emiliano on drums and especially Emiliano comes from a different area he has a different background he's more into prog rock progressive metal stuff like that so I think combining all the minds by ensure some now we created some Something, uh, unique, which is not only doom metal, not only gothic or melodic death, but it's a mixture of all those things. And I mean, every webzine and magazine recognized that in reviews and every people we met, they all recognized that. The first album, they said we had these influences coming from Scandinavia, like with doom and gothic metal, but also from the US with the vocal harmonies reminding of Alice in Chains. It wasn't something we thought about when we were creating the songs it, they just came up that way so the first album I would say it's more uh, naive and it has many many different aspects so it wasn't on a hundred percent focused on what our genre was the second album we were more aware of the band sound I think it sounds more complex as we say in the bio because it has some more uh, progressive passages but both album after all are very dark and melancholic that's our main goal but we also like melody we like to work on the arrangements and on the vocal harmonies so you will hear um, growls and screams but uh, most of the vocals are clean after having working with candlelight records now the italian black and gothic doom unit shores of null will release beyond the shores on that and dying this coming November 27, 2020 via a Spike Rat Records, which is an Italian record label founded on January 2018 by Alessio Leocaglia of Winnipeg together with Antonello Forte and to you, Davide Stazioni, as a label specialized in releasing extreme metal, stoner metal, and soundtracks. Tell me more about this record label, please, that you guys have formed, and are you working with more bands, and how is the promotion for this new release of Shores of Null going? Well, thanks for asking about Pycroft Records. After the experience with Candlelight, we've decided, we had a contract for two albums, so we decided not to continue continue with them because we wanted to have more control over our releases and in 2018 I started this label with Alessio and Antonello it was something that was in our minds for a while and we started in 2018 releasing first my Zippo album the reissue of the, of the debut album and uh, Guinea Pig debut album so we started with our bands and then we expanded to other bands we released such brilliant Italian bands like Sedna or uh, Naga or Zolfo. All three of them can be found in the post black metal, post metal, doom sludge, all very, very dark sounding bands. And so the idea of releasing Beyond the Shores through my label Spike Road Records came naturally after talking to the band. We thought we could have more control over the album, over the promotion and do what we wanted. So I spoke with my man band members and my label members and we decided, okay, let's do a vinyl, let's do five different color variants and uh, let's do a Digipack CD. And so we arranged it very naturally speaking in person with a bigger label communication is always very hard. There are some boundaries to cross and although the exposure can be great, on the other hand, the band's got nothing. That was our experience. So promotion is going well because we have the control over it and after all these years, uh, we can manage how to promote an album. We're not doing it alone. We've hired a couple of PR agencies so there will be all noir agency covering Europe, Asher Media Relations covering US and Canada. So so there will be, I hope, 
um, a big boost in promotion. We also have an Italian guy, ENR agency, taking care of Italian market, magazines. So I hope everything is going to be all right and people will like it. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, you guys are covering the whole the whole world. I mean, it's a good thing you have people covering North American territory, I think even the South American and covering Italy and Europe in general. That's very great uh, for you. I mean, um, to be able to do this promotion throughout the world. There will also be a second single coming out on November 1st. Actually, they're not proper singles. They are excerpts because the album is one track album. To continue with this interview, all shores of Null songs were written by Gabriele Riasciari and Raffaele Colace. Lyrics and vocals arrangement by you, Davide. A mix and master was done by Marco Cigno, Master Buono, and the band was able to present and even more diverse and electric sound on the album thanks to the addition of the classical instruments like piano and violin along with the return of the talented Marco Mastrobono who also worked with Innocence, Coffin, Bird, Hour of Finance, Flash God, Apocalypse behind the production desk. David, how was the working gone doing a songwriting and the recording of this massive 30 eight minutes and 24 second long single and how was your experience with Marco at Bloom Recording Studio? Marco is a long time friend. He used to play with uh, Gabriele in his former band The Orange Man Theory so we entrusted every single album we've ever recorded to him. His studio is actually called Kick Recording Studio but uh, on this album we're recording some parts in another studio, a bigger one called Bloom recording studios this album was done uh, in two studios basically both in the Rome area so yeah the recording were really really good and we really enjoyed doing this album which was something totally different from us recording a, a song of nearly 40 minutes it's a gigantic thing it's been really uh, different from other records we've recorded how was the songwriting going and the recording I mean uh, working with uh, Gabriele and Raffaele and doing the recording well the songwriting was really particular we entered the studio to record other songs and and we started doing tracking drums and bass for uh, these other songs that will be our next album. When we had some time after the recording drums and bass, we had some time off and Gabo and Raffaele came up with this new song, which was supposed to be a B-side or extra additional track. But while composing the song, we figured out it was going to be longer than expected. So we decided to continue on this path and to explore more our darker side and uh, follow the slowness and the tragedy. <laughs> we wanted to do a Doom song at that point. So we entered the studio again to record this new material and we were so enthusiastic about the results that we decided to release it first. So basically this album we're releasing, it will be a third album, but we already have another album recorded for uh, you know next chapter. Before I forget, I like to say hi and thanks to Dominique Concalves Dos Reyes of All Noir for this interview. Yeah, he's doing a great job. I really collaborate with All Noir for the other releases of my label. It was really um, the first choice to work with on this album as well. Shores of Null start to work beyond the shores on a death and a dying. We'll continue to prove the band's willingness of to go off the beaten path and create their ultimate doom manifesto. A 38 minute long suit emphasizing their heavier, slower and dramatic side inspired by the five stages of grief formulated by the Swiss American psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler Ross. The band has collaborated on the Dark Opus with many special guests, including two Doom Titans. I'm talking about Miko Kotamaki of Swallow the Sun and Thomas A.G. Jensen Saturnus, along with angelic voice of Elisabetta Machetti of Inu. Outstanding collaboration amongst David 
between the band and all the very talented guest musicians. Tell us more about uh, the work done with them and the idea to bring them on board. Yes, since the beginning, when we realized this song was going to be very different from the rest of our discography, we wanted to have some guests on it to add some more value and some more personality of each guest. We wanted to be a choral opus, the only recruiting friends and people we're inspired by. So the choice of having Nico and Thomas from Swallow the Sun and Saturnus was no accident. We fiercely wanted these great pals to be on the album because we think they possess some of the best growls in doom metal and extreme metal in general. They are both unique, yet different enough to make them complementary within the song. We did something that other bands normally don't do. We didn't just send the tracks to these guys. We invited them to Rome. We flew them to Rome and we spent <laughs> a couple of days with them. Unfortunately, separately, not both in the same days because it wasn't possible, but it was our idea to have to doom legends in Rome for a couple of days. Unfortunately, we had to split these two visits, but it was great to have them in the studio and record the songs. Of course, they knew what parts they were going to sing, but it's been a great experience. We got to have some drinks together and eat dinner together. And so that, that was great. And about Elisabetta, which is actually the wife of Marco, our producer, she plays in the band Inno together with him. It's a great gothic doom metal band. If you have the chance, check it out. We never had any angelic voice, as we said in our bio. Female vocals is something we never done. So we really wanted to to have a female vocals on the album. And we, we wanted to try as the song totally demanded it, I think. So she sings together with me. It's like a duet. Uh, so uh, I love the parts with her, actually. And I love every guest part. And beside that, as you said, there are piano, violins, and it has this 90s gothic and death do metal vibe. It's slower than everything we've ever done before. And as I said, every guest brought his or her personality to the work, making this album truly special, in my opinion. Davide, I must say that I'm uh, very honored as well, because I'm busy already with um, this record label. I'm talking about uh, Time to Kill Records, if I'm not wrong, yeah. uh, with Marita getting ready, all the things needed to get touch with Marco and Elisabetta. Um, so I hope very soon we can have uh, Eno also in interview for the new album, The Rain under. Yeah, so Time to Kill is their label. Now uh, we know them, of course. They're from Rome. Great guys. Unfortunately, in uh, we're not able to perform a single show since they formed because they formed recently and the album was released this year. And then COVID-19, they couldn't perform a single show so far. They did a live streaming as a release party. <laughs> that's the only thing they could do. That's yeah. nothing you can do now. And we don't know, you know, that's the problem. We don't know when things are going to go back to normal. <laughs>
continue with this interview. I must say I love uh, the videos, um, the video that you guys have done, even the, those in the past great tunes that you made a video of. I'm um, talking about like House of Christ, uh, The No, uh, Romans Alive, Kings of Null, and many, many other videos that you guys have done. As I was asking the video, will you be able to make a video for this new release? We've already done a few trailers with uh, presenting the guests filmed in the studio. So they're all online on YouTube. You can check them out. We talked a lot about what to do with this album because since the beginning, we've always loved to put on video our music. So our visual identity is very important, the visual aspect of the band. So also in the live shows, we used to have these projections. We really want to have good videos, but how can you do a video with a 38-minute song? We thought it was impossible. So uh, we were thinking about some other ways to do it, maybe make a video for an, an extract, an excerpt. Uh, but in the end, we decided, okay, uh, we don't care. Let's make a short uh, movie for this. So late November, when the final track is going to come out, uh, we should have a full video to go along with it. Okay, Shores of Null has performed over 150 shows, including six European tours with In the Woods, a rap altar, Wooden Manas, Morning Beloved, November, Harakiri for the Sky, Sylvian, and many more. Dozens of shows and tours in their home country with Primordial, Actros, uh, Candle Mass, Monsaro, Leprous, uh, Saturnus, Negura Banjet, etc and many, many, many European festivals, including Inferno festivals, Eindhoven Metal Meeting, Winter Days of Metal, Doom Over London, Tali, Talia Fest, Fanatic Fest, and many more. Metal Days in Tomlin, Slovenia, was among the thousands of the festivals that has been postponed this year to 2021. Yeah. Yes, this great festival I attended uh, two years ago, a very great festival I enjoyed join so much the vida are you guys on the bill for the 2021 uh, metal days and what other shows tours or festivals will the band uh, be doing for this coming year yes we are confirmed for metal days 2021 basically they confirmed the same lineup beside that we've been recently confirmed for uh, a festival in northern italy in july 2021 and it's called it's not a very well-known festival but it's growing a lot it's called Lukok in cremona the city where it's happening and we're gonna play with Catatonia, Leprous, Moonspell and November. On the other days of the festival it's gonna be three days there also will be Testament and other bands I remember right now. These are the only two shows plan for the next year but i think we'll be doing some shows some club shows in italy as soon as the situation will be clearer about the capacity i'm sure we're gonna play some live shows so far nothing has been planned we could do a release party even in theaters with people seated because you know the music yeah it's heavy but it's not violent and you can enjoy it while sitting no mosh pit <laughs> no mosh pit for sure of null and uh, a single track album one long track man to be heard in full as an album experience the release is entitled beyond the shores on death and dying and you out on november 27 via spike rot records for fans that love swallow the sun catatonia my dying bright paradise lost insomnium all these great bands you have to check shores of null a very great gothic doom metal band coming out of rome italy the vita I want to thank you very much to have made this interview possible and I want to hand you over the microphone of Man Messiah Radio for you to invite all your friends or your fans to support the band to buy his albums and to buy the band brand new album this one we just talked about Beyond the Shores and on Death and Dying which is scheduled to release this November 27, 2020 on this prestige Spike Rot record but before we leave the video for fans that really to have this new new 
album and those that you already have released before, I also encourage them to buy them. But especially for this new one, could you please tell us in how many different formats will there be available? And how about the cover artwork? I see that you have different artworks for the CD. Who is responsible for this cover artwork for the album? And I see that you also have T-shirt with another artwork on. And who was responsible for those um Artwork for the t-shirts. The album Beyond the Shores on Death and Dying can be pre-ordered right now at spikerot.com. So it's only available on pre-order now and also on the label's Bandcamp. If you like what you hear, there's an excerpt on Spotify. You can listen to three minutes of the song. If you like it, you can help us and support us. The album will be out on five different vinyl colors and each one of the colors will uh, uh, represent Represent one of the stages of grief we talk about in the album. Every color variant has a name. First one is denial. The second one is anger. Third one, bargaining. And then there's depression and acceptance. So it's a transition between the, uh, from black color to the white color. So every variant is a color in between black and white, leading to the white color, which is the liberation and acceptance of death, because the whole concept revolves around this book by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, psychiatrist, mm -hmm. is called On Death and Dying, which is the subtitle of our album. So it's that's why it's beyond the shores on death and dying. The artist that did the cover album is Sabrina Caramanico. She's a friend of mine from my region here in Italy, and she's a photographer. So the picture is the cover artwork is actually a no, photography. No, she didn't paint it. That's not a paint. No, no, it is a picture. It's a picture made in winter in the mountains around in my region. Pescara is on the sea, but if you drive uh, 40 minutes, you're in the mountains. You can take those very, very nice pictures. And also in the artwork, everything is white. So the back and the label of the vinyl or the CD, everything is white and uh, photographed in the mountains. And it symbolizes the white color opposed to what we normally think in Western culture. The black color symbolizes death and mourn. While in the Asian culture, especially Japan, where I've been a couple of times, this color, the color of loss and mourn and death is the white color. So I wanted to create this bridge between cultures, and it's also a cultural thing. I like to picture the death as a white thing. So snow represents death and the awareness of finitude and the acceptance of death, especially terminally ill patient. It's a very, very grievy album, very, very dark. And uh, beside that, the t-shirts, you asked about the t-shirts. So there are some t-shirts with the cover design and the t-shirts that were done uh, on purpose and were created by uh, Remedy Art. It's a Greek guy who has worked for Oceans of Slumber, Incantation, Suffocation, many other bands and it's a really, really great style that we like. And you can find this t-shirt on the Shores of No band camp. Okay, very good. Before I leave the video, I kindly ask you to say hello to Gabriele, say hello to Raffaele, say hello to Matteo, Emiliano, for me, please. And yeah. Yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, so once again, the microphone of Metal Messiah Radio is all yours to thank whomever you want to thank. I want to say thank you to each one of you listening to this interview. It's actually the first interview of the Beyond the Shores cycle. So this is the first interview I'm giving besides some mailer interview, but this is the first real interview. So um, thank you for inviting me. We are very pleased for being the first one to do this interview with you for this new album Beyond the Shores yeah thank you so much and want to remind we still have pre-orders going on on spikerot.com or spikerot records bandcamp page and uh, we have t-shirts on both the label website and bandcamp and the band's bandcamp you can find a band on facebook.com slash shores of no on instagram the same shores of no so it's pretty easy to remember no weird codes <laughs> just type shores of Null on Google everywhere and you'll find us. And also okay. we have a website, shoresofnull.com, if you're old school. David, once again I hope things will get to normal this coming year. You know, the bands go back on tour and we as fans as uh, medias can go back to see you guys live, to meet you guys behind stage or anywhere on the field yeah. of festivals. Yeah, and I wish 
you all the best for the band for this upcoming new album. Wish you all the best with it. And to all of you that are listening, I highly recommend this album. I want to thank you for have sending me it. I listened to it. I took the time yesterday to listen to it to the whole 38 minutes. And I just kept listening over and over again this masterpiece. And I highly recommend it beyond the shores on death and dying. It's so, so beautiful, so dark, so melancholic. Do the pre-order. Order it now, especially finals that finish right away. But when the album comes out, if you haven't do the pre-order, go get it. This album is a must that you have it in your collection. Okay, so thank you. David, anything else you want to say? Well, thanks to Metal Messiah Radio for having me. I hope to see you soon and ag <laughs> every one of you. <laughs> <laughs> this year I had planned was going to Inferno Fest it was cancelled oh. before going to Inferno I was either planned to go to Rome or planned to go to Germany Copenhagen and Malmo Sweden you know COVID came and Inferno was cancelled uh, I couldn't go to WAC and I couldn't go to Brutal so <laughs> I was stuck here at home and I couldn't fly I couldn't come to Rome looking forward yeah. to be in Rome very soon hoping to see you guys live where, on tour where do you live exactly? Madame Messiah Radio has DJ station all over the world in Europe, Asia, North America, South America. I'm in the Caribbean for uh, Madame Saya Radio. Okay, great. But we are Dutch. We are Dutch citizens. We always in Holland. Okay, cool. Yes, like I always say, metal on. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.